So this video is going to talk about the empirical rule. And again, remember the empirical rule is what we call our 68 95 99.7% rule. Right? And it's based on the number of standard deviations from the mean or within the mean here. So within means between. So within one standard deviation of my mean, it's always going to lie 68% of the data. And that's one standard deviation. I'm, I can be to the left over here or to the right over here within one standard deviation. That's going to be 68% of the data. And this works because the only way to get this, remember, this normal shape, this unimodal symmetric bell-shaped curve is to have these certain percentages. So, and because it's symmetric, if 68 sits in the middle, if 68% is right here between these two values, that means there's 34 to the left, one standard deviation, and 34 to the right, or a positive standard deviation away. And then within two standard deviations is 95% of the data. So within two standard deviations, you now have 95% of all your data sits within two. And again, we can figure out these little bitty pieces that sit inside of here by doing 95 minus 68, that's 27. And you divide it by two, that's how you get this 13.5 here and 13.5 here. And then finally, within three standard deviations of the mean is 99.7% of all the data. So you have 99.7% percent of all the data within three standard deviations. And what that really means then is that almost all of the data sits within three standard deviations. And you can see if 99.7 is on the inside within three, there's 0.3 outside, on, but it has to be split on both sides. So that's how they calculate this 0.15 percent here and this 0.15 percent here. So these are the, this is, these are the rules for the empirical rule. And we're going to use these percentages now to actually find percentages under any normal curve. As long as we have this shape and we know the mean and the standard deviation of a curve, we can use those percentages with fairly, uh, with fairly accurate results. So here it says that we have this particular radish that's grown in a certain type of fertilizer. And those radishes, those radishes are normally distributed. And remember, this word normally distributed means draw a normal curve. And we're going to draw the curve with the mean that's given to us. So our mu here, our mu here is equal to 40. And our standard deviation sigma is equal to 10. So when we look at that, we get this curve right here that's labeled already with the mean of 40, standard deviation of 10. The other part of this equation says that we're going to grow the radishes with the fertilizer. And you notice that when you grow the radishes with the fertilizer, right, it tells me that the new mean is 140. The new mean is 140 here, the standard deviation of 40. So we're going to go ahead and draw that curve, too, to figure out some answers. So this first one says, let's, grab, let's look at the curve without fertilizer, right? Let's look at that curve without fertilizer, and let's find the percentage of values that weigh less than 50, that weigh less than 50. So this is the curve without fertilizer right now. This is the without fertilizer curve. And we want to know the values that lie less than 50. So that means this, and notice this, 50 is one full standard deviation above the mean. We want to find less than, so we're going to shade our curve to the left, and we want to find these values here. Well, this is simple to do now if we have this chart up here. All we have to do is correlate what we have down here with what's up here. Notice that within one standard deviation is 34%, and going to the left, you would get 34, 34, that's 68, plus 13.5, that'll be 81 and a half, plus 2.35, plus 0.15, and when you add all that up, you're going to get 84. So here, the percentage of radishes that are grown that weigh less than 50 grams without the fertilizer, that is 84%. The next one says, what about with fertilizer? And those we want to know when they weigh less than 60 grams. So for this one, we need to draw a second curve. And we're going to draw the width curve now, with the fertilizer curve for this problem. Let's go ahead and draw that curve. So when we draw this curve with fertilizer, it 
the mean of this curve now is 140 and the standard deviation the standard deviation is 40 so put the mean at the middle at 140 one standard deviation is going to be 180 two standard deviations will be 220 three standard deviations will be 260 make sure we go back the other way as well 140 minus 40 is 100 minus another 40 is 60 and minus another 40 is 20. And so now we have that curve drawn. So this is the width fertilizer curve. And for this one, it says with fertilizer that with the fertilizer, they want to know the weights that are less than 60 grams. So on this curve, here is 60. There is 60. And we want to be less than that. So we're going to go to the left again like this. And you notice that is two standard deviations away. One, two, that's two standard deviations away. Come up here. We see that two standard deviations away puts you at 2.35 and 0.15. And when you add that up, you're going to get 2.5%. So 2.5% of the weights fall less than that on the width curve, width fertilizer curve. Now we're going to do with and without fertilizer with weights between 20 and 60 grams. So on this first curve, on the without curve, 20 and 60 here and here. And notice that that's two standard deviations to the left and two standard deviations to the right. So that's going to put us literally at 95% because you're within two standard deviations both ways. So for the without curve, that's equal to 95%. Now we need to find those same values on the width fertilizer curve. And on the width, here is 60 and 20 is right here, and you're just in this lower spot right here. So you're basically from 2 to 3, negative 2 to negative 3, and that's equal to just 2.35%. So width is equal to 2.35%. And notice all I'm doing is I'm, I'm, mark, I'm using the standard deviations that are given, and I'm referencing the curve that's up here. And the reason this works is because each one of the values that they're giving me is a standard deviation. It's falling on a standard deviation. So it's easy for me to go back and correspond to the curve at the top. And so the last one says, with and without fertilizer that will have weights greater than or equal to 60 grams. Well, we come over here to the without curve first. Greater than 60 would be anything to the right. And notice that greater than 60, 60 is that two standard deviation. So it's basically saying anything bigger than two standard deviations, 2.35 and 0.15. Add those up. So the width curve is equal to 2.5%. The without curve, I'm sorry. That's the without curve. And then for the width curve, Again, we want to do greater than 60. Well, greater than 60 is over here now. And we're going to go to the right of that. And again, we started right here at this two standard deviation mark. We're going to add all these values up again. And when you add all this up, you get 97.5%. So when you add those up for the width curve, it's equal to 97.5%. And again, it's just me adding up 0 0.135, 0 0.34, 0 0.34, 0 0.135, 0 0.0235, and then 0 0.015. And so that's how we use the, stand, we use the empirical rule to find percentages underneath the normal curve. 